Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And uh, make sure you hit that like button because this episode is all about the future. You know, that last week's loss pretty much knocked us out and it knocked us out of being bowl eligible. So this episode is all about looking at the future pretty much. You can see, look at our seniors on the roster. We have 26 seniors, 17 juniors. So we have a ton of guys that are leaving our school this year. But what helps is that we did have a strong recruiting class as we got 20 commits to our school. Andrew Chapman, Brandon Jones, all these guys have committed to our school, 20 in total. So since we have 20, we decided to add about, we only have 25 scholarships. We decided to add about three or four more guys to the board that are one star guys. Jack Kleck is still one of those guys that we're still waiting for. We don't know if we're gonna get him. We are in second right now, but we do have his visit coming up this week. He would help immensely in the passing game. Mark Wright, another one star from Tennessee. But here's where we added a few guys. Lance Haas, it looks like uh, we got 25% of him scouting. He's gonna be 52 overall. As it looks right now, uh, he's gonna. we are creeping up the board. We just added these guys this week. Raymond Hester, another guy. Uh, looks like he's gonna be 58 overall. He is a freshman D end as well. Um, hopefully he does some things well. Looks like his play recognition is actually 70, 77, which will actually help us quite a bit because our ends, we need to get some more pass rush. Another guy, he's 68 overall, but he is a Juco. One star from California, Spring Valley, California. At 68 overall, he would probably be our easily be our best defender right away. It looks like he can play man a little bit, so maybe even moving him over to middle linebacker has 91 acceleration coming uh, in, but we need to get him to commit first. We're down by 1,500 right now, but we're the only team to offer him a scholarship, so we still have a chance. And then Dustin Myrick, another guy, as we unlock his raise, we see he's 67. He's another Juco guy, a D end. Maybe we can get him to come, but I mean, right now, we're pretty much set with our recruiting class. Let's just see where we're ranked because uh, we pretty much have all of our recruits in. We don't have many scholarships left. Right now, we're sitting at 68. And remember, our first, until we get to a three-star school, we will not be able to recruit any two-stars. So until we get to that two-star, three-star prestige, we won't be able to recruit any two-stars. So we're going to make it tough on ourselves, make it so we only get one-star recruits as we're a first uh, and a second-star prestige uh, school. So after that loss to Troy, this is how the uh, conference outlook is looking. Troy went on to be 6-2. and two. They're probably headed to the conference championship on the other side of the uh, division. It's still a deadlock here. We don't know who's going to make it, but, I mean, that loss, it, I mean, it really hurt us as we go up against Appalachian State this week. Um, a lot of things to get into in this episode. So Heisman watchers, see who's in the Heisman watch. Remember, this is kind of a mix of last year's rosters with this year's rosters. Um, and you'll see a lot of guys that are up here that are still, you know, either they either went to the NFL already or still in college. You can see Will Greer is a senior as well as Lamar Jackson. But we know uh, those two, um, Will Greer is still in college. Lamar Jackson just went to the NFL. And then other guys behind them like JT Barrett and Larry Roundtree round out the top five. So I want to get into the con get into the roster a little bit and just look at to see who's going to be here playing in this future game. This is kind of a senior game, too. I want to get the seniors in in the first half. But in the second half, I kind of want to focus on the young guys to see who's going to contribute. I want to kind of split the uh, third and fourth quarter up with David and Curtin both getting playing time, uh, seeing what we have in both of them. Curtin has played a little bit more than David did. David played earlier in the year, but he showed that he was very, very inaccurate. Another guy we didn't really look at, we looked at him a little bit last game, was Javier Garcia. He's a junior. He's a power back. He's only had two carries this year, but he's more of the bigger back out of everybody. But this is the big back that I'm rooting for here, that I'm waiting for. Jimbo Brown, I'm excited about him. He's only 80 speed, but 76 trucking. Um, he's a big, big guy. I mean, he's, he's big. Six foot, 200. I mean, he's he's pretty good. I think he's got some high strength here at 70. He's our highest strength running back. So he's going to be a power back. And then Keith Syracuse Jr. is going to get in a lot as well. I want to see what he's got. Looking at receiver in the future, um, Amari Manuel is coming back for his senior season. But ahead of him, I mean, we have Sam Forbes, who is still kind of banged up a little bit. You can see he's a little banged up. He's a sophomore. He's coming back. 
but Ashton, Wynn, and Goodwin are all graduating. But we do have another freshman, Angel Gonzalez. I'm excited to see him next season. He's redshirted, so he won't play in this game. Max Moriarty is a sophomore. And then Cameron Dixon. They're probably both going to be competing for that starting job uh, at tight end that come next year. But another interesting position I want to look at is left outside linebacker. Who's going to play in the place of Hudson? Because we do have Nyjah Bolin, who's going to get better as a junior, and then Ben Eckstein, who's going to be getting better as well. He's a redshirt freshman, and he hasn't really touched the field at all. So another junior that's going to be coming up is that second middle linebacker, Jamal Williams, and uh, Lawton and Mejia. They're both graduating as well, so I'm going to try to get them some playing time, not so much Jamal Williams because this is going to be their last game, so I'm going to get Mejia and Lawton in there. And then at the right outside linebacker position, because Pritchard is graduating, um, Ian Hartman, he's going to have a chance to compete along with Eric Hughes as well. And we don't know exactly if the freshmen are going to compete. I imagine that a lot of freshmen are going to get red-shirted come next season. So uh, looking at our players of the game last week, I don't really have too many guys to really pump up from last week, but Sam Forbes went over 100 yards in his return. I think he's ready for another big year come next year, and uh, he definitely showed me that he's going to be a staple in the offense as long as he stays healthy, and he's going to be a pretty big part come next year. And Frederick Billups at defensive tackle. I mean, he had a pretty good game. Two sacks in the first half. He kind of disappeared in the second half, but he's our highest awareness guy on the team right now. So he's getting even a bigger boost. So it's good to see him getting better each week. And uh, if you look at his season stats, 16 tackles, seven sacks. He's leading our team with seven. And hopefully, you know, I can get some defensive ends that kind of surround him and have a good game uh, along with him because it seems like, you know, our defensive line has been pretty consistent i've been hoping for danny armstead to kind of step up you know he's really good in the run game but I, I would think that he's more of a pass rusher but he's shown that this year he's been kind of a run stopper and there's nothing wrong with that but i would like to see him improve his pass rushing just a little bit as jalen joe came in uh midway through the year he's got three sacks on the year so definitely more sacks from our ends and then from our outside linebackers, they're doing a pretty good job. Danelle Hudson is doing pretty good. He's got four sacks on the year. He had that uh, big two-sack game. But, you know, he came along kind of a late bloomer. But we are going into this matchup versus uh, Appalachian State. And this is going to be a tough matchup because we are once again going up against another team with just better athletes. I mean, they have better athletes. They're just the overall better team. And you look at their uh, defense here, they are 11th in total defense. So it's going to be tough for, you know, a lot of our backups to come in. This is going to be their first time seeing uh, playing time on the season, at least meaningful playing time. And it's going to be tough versus these athletes of Appalachian State. You see they're hot. I mean, coming into this week, they're on a three-game win streak. Beat Georgia State, Troy, and Texas State. All close games, uh, albeit, but... You know, looking at their leaders, Lamb, he throws a lot of, he throws touchdowns, but he also throws picks as well. Kind of the same thing we saw last game, but we see, I mean, the Troy quarterback didn't make any, any mistakes. I mean, he was just pretty much flawless. So, I mean, right now that really means nothing because our defense, yeah, I mean, it's hit and miss. We had a couple games where we were really good, then a couple games where we were really bad. So, I mean, let's just hop into this game. This is all about the future. I mean, I want to see how the future of my defense, and plus, I want to see how these seniors will play in their last game because we have a lot to get into. But this is the episode where you guys submit your recruits. So make sure you submit your recruits down below um, and make sure I'm going to set the template down there as well. So make sure you set your recruits submit your guys because there's going to be 20 of you guys that's all eas uh, allows for custom recruits so make sure to submit your stuff all these guys on these teams are going to be custom except for like maybe a few guys uh, that are one stars coming in just to fill out the roster but i want to see what you guys got give me a little backstory give me uh a little bit of you know give me some interesting stories i want some different things coming in and it's going to be interesting seeing you guys down in the comment section and seeing what you guys submit so let's hop into this game play appalachian state for the last game of the season i want to see what these young guys do along with these seniors so let's hop into it so here come the seniors out for their final game of this first season can we get a win for them and on the first play here is more getting the ball 
But look who's there, the sophomore, Danny Armstead. I'm going to be looking for Danny Armstead to have a big year come next year. And he's one of those guys that I think just needs to have a breakthrough season next season. And I think him, I think Sam Forbes, him being injured a lot of the year, I don't think he lived up to his full potential. He had really great games, don't get me wrong, but having him for a full season will definitely help. And having Danny Armstead, you know, going at it full strength for a full season, coming back fresh and renewed, I think it'll help us come next year. As we see Lamb in the shotgun this time, running the read option and picking up a running lane for the touchdown and that's one thing we got to improve on our run defense it's been pretty poor this season as we give up another one on the ground and Appalachian State takes the seven nothing lead so here to start the game out here is Emilio Garcia out for his final game as a senior at quarterback and on a second and 13 here he is from the shotgun feels the rush throws to the left side and that one is going to be picked off by Hayes Jr. on the outside and on his second pass of the game, Emilio Garcia turns it over. So now Appalachian State takes over and on the second play from scrimmage, they run it in for the touchdown. Ryan Marshall had to choose the quarterback or the pitch man, chose the pitch man. Lamb runs in for the touchdown. So two quick scores here to start this game as Emilio Garcia, can he get going after that early interception? Here he is finding C.J. Goodwin and on a second and 13, a couple of plays later, here he is feeling the pressure and taking the sack deep in the pocket and that's a big loss on that one, 13 yard loss. So on a third and 25, here he is throwing to the left side but doesn't throw it deep enough that time. It's tipped by Shamar John Charles and it, we force or they force a punt. So now back out on defense. Can this defense stop this rushing attack as Lamb shows the uh, accuracy on that one, throwing to the sideline, and here he is giving it off to Moore, and Moore's going to make it to about the 35-yard line. So now on a fresh first and 10, here is Moore getting the ball this time on the outside hand, breaking a tackle and getting up close to the 20-yard line. So on a second in 10 a couple of plays later here is Moore getting the hand off one more time Bruh. and somehow Darius Terry misses the tackle and Jalen Moore runs in for the touchdown and man it is already 21 nothing we knew Appalachian State would be good we kind of thought they would be smoother than Troy going into this game I think that Appalachian State is actually kind of maybe a better team than Troy. I don't know, but ratings wise, I think they are. They're either they either are or they're really close. So we knew this would be a tough game. So here is Emilio Garcia back out on offense, giving the ball to Cameron Yates this time on a third and three, and he can't pick up the first. But we're down 21-0. We gotta go for this. We have nothing to lose. Last game of the season. So on a fourth and three, dropping back to pass. And he's taking a hit, and that one's going to be another turnover, and Appalachian State takes over. 21 to nothing, and they have the ball as oh, another man open here. This time it's Meadows across the middle, and, man, our defense, we I think we're just gassed at this point in the season. Trying to play these tough teams, keeping up with them has been tough as uh, Appalachian State doing what they want when they want. But on a third down this time, we finally get a small stop. Preston Mays on the coverage that time and forces the drop. So now on a fourth and eight, they do kick the field goal and make it a 24 to nothing lead going into the second quarter. So now here's Garcia. Can he put up points on the board as he does complete his first pass of this next drive to Mason Wynn on the outside for his first catch for his final game. So now on a first and 10, here is Garcia throwing across the middle to win one more time, nine yards. So now on a third and one this time, giving it to Yates, and Yates does pick up the first down as Cameron Yates playing in his final game as a senior as well. A lot of seniors on this team. I mean, our starting quarterbacks, both Milam and Garcia, both seniors. Then we have on the outside, CJ Goodwin, uh, Paco Ashton, and uh, Mason Wynn, they're all seniors, so they're all going to be gone as G Goodwin does get a reception that time. And then you look at our tight end position. Sean Daquan is a senior as well. And then uh, we do have, backing him up, Max Moriarty. 
and uh I mean a lot of guys. I mean we we just have so many holes to fill and it's going to be tough. I I can't lie. It's going to be tough. I mean it's going to be really tough actually. I mean we have I believe it's 26 graduating seniors. It's going to be tough. So here we are getting sacked, losing a lot of yards, but we choose to kick the long field goal and that big sack proves to hurt us there is look at you can see the field goal hits off the crossbar and coastal is down zero to 24 as one more time appalachian state another big play as taylor lamb throws across the middle finding his receiver making it 31 to nothing and this is just sad up to this point but one lone bright spot before the half here is Marcus Milam actually in the game now as Emilio Garcia was shaken up on the last drive and Cameron Yates getting going for eight yards here so now inside the 15 yard line here is Milam at the helm can he do something different remember he was our starter to start the year but Emilio Garcia took over and now uh it's looking like this might be the end of his day as Milam gets going gets the ball to Sam Forbes over the middle making it 31 to 7 so now a minute left here in this first half here is the quarterback Moore throwing across to the left and that is going to be picked off by Preston Mays Taylor Lamb makes his first mistake of the game and that's going to be a pick so now can we put some points on the board make it a manageable lead that we can possibly catch up a little bit and here's Cameron Yates getting going in the passing game I'm gonna miss him next year come uh when it comes to throwing the ball to our running backs we'll see what's Keith Syracus Jr we have Jimbo Brown we also have Javier Garcia who's gonna be the starter next year at running back I really don't know at this point but you know it's good to speculate I want to get a good look at our backups in this game come second half so we'll see how it goes as Marcus Milam Rolls out to the right side. So with 10 seconds left in this half, can we put up points on the board as Marcus Milam feels the pressure, throws it out of bounds. So six seconds left here in the first half as Marcus Milam from the shotgun throws across the middle, and that's the senior to senior connection, Sean Daquan. As, I mean, what a story it's been this season. Started the season out as starting quarterback. And that's going to be it, 31-14 at half. As we now get to see a lot of our backups, because you can see Emilio Garcia is actually out for the game. He gets hurt in his final game. So that brings on a lot of backups, a lot of young guys. As we get to see Kashawn Curtin getting it out to Sam Forbes. And Sam Forbes puts on the move on two defenders that time. And that's a connection that we're going to probably see as well. Sam Forbes is going to be a sophomore coming back. We want to see what he's got because, you know, it's going to be it's going to be a different looking team come next season because you think about it, Kashawn Curtin or Wesley David is going to be the starter. I'm letting Kashawn Curtin get a little more burn just because he's a freshman. I want to get that experience and Wesley David, you know, he's kind of inaccurate. He's got to work on his accuracy a little bit. As you can see, we go for it on a fourth down take a big sack but just talking about our team in the future it's going to be different on offense defense is going to have a little a few shakeups i mean a lot as far as like small positions like one of our middle linebacker spots uh a couple of end spots but we do have a lot of guys returning preston Mays is return as us uh, graduating as well on the outside but we do have a lot of guys that have been waiting th their shot to play and it just hasn't happened because they haven't been the best option. So it's going to be quite the experience to see some of these young guys who we had behind, sitting behind, uh, get some burn next year. As we see Mason Wynn gets a long reception on that one in his final game. And the thing about Kashawn Curtin is that he can show accuracy as he finds another freshman, Cameron Dixon, on the outside. But... You know, the thing that we need to build with him is just consistency. And I, I, I'm kind of, I don't know. I, I'm, I, don't, I don't know how I feel going into the next season. 
Uh, I like Kashawn Curtin because he can run. Wesley David can run a little bit as well, but nobody has great accuracy, and that's the one thing that Emilio Garcia did bring to the table. When I need Kashawn Curtin to make these throws, those crucial third down, fourth down throws, Emilio Garcia was pretty reliable in that department, and I hope Kashawn Curtin can be that same way as we do make this a 10-point game so now in the third quarter three minutes left here is lamb on the read option picking up a big block from his offensive lineman that time and picking up 20 yards so now inside the 30 yard line here is lamb having all day to throw throwing across the middle on a third down but preston mays on the coverage i don't know if he got a hand on that one but the receiver did drop it as they do kick the long field goal and that one is going to be good. So now two minutes left in this third quarter. Now down by only 13 points. Remember, we were down at one point 31 to nothing in this game. And we made this a game. So now uh, here is Gurton rolling out to the left. And on the next play, getting it out to Cameron Dixon, the freshman. And he's getting 20 yards. And Cameron Dixon is going to be a big part of that passing game. He is actually our most athletic tight end. And he's going to be the most athletic tight end coming into next season. And one guy I want to keep my eye on come next season, Javier Garcia. He's listed as a third running back on our depth chart right now. He hasn't gotten much burn this year at all. He's a junior, so he's going to be back for his senior season. So it's going to be kind of cool seeing Kashawn Curtin, Javier Garcia, and big Jimbo Brown competing for that starting running back job. And remember, Jimbo Brown is a redshirt freshman come next season. And he showed out in the spring game. Remember, he was a big part of the spring game. But I thought that we should redshirt him because I want to save that four years of eligibility. We want to make him uh, worth saving. So now uh, we're now into the part of the season where, you know, we can start talking about these things. We can start analyzing different positions and thinking about the future so now inside the five yard line back to the game here is Curtin. i mean he's making a few good throws on this drive as he gives it to garcia on the counter and javier garcia showing a little bit of burst coming into his senior season i like what i'm seeing and he's kind of a bigger back too he's six foot i believe and he reminds me of kind of a uh, cameron yates i mean i like cameron yates he's he's a uh, Kind of a power back that can actually receive out of the backfield. And uh, maybe Javier Garcia is going to be uh, kind of a bell cow. We'll see. So now back out on defense. Here is Coastal down by six points now into the fourth quarter. But on a second and one, look at Lamb finding his favorite receiver, Evans, open down the left sideline. And Evans is going to run in for the 64 yard reception and who was guarding him because he was wide open on that and now it's back down to a two score deficit as here comes coastal back on our offense nice throw that time had to put that uh on the money for sam Ford to receive that one so now on a second and ten here four minutes left in the fourth throwing it to the left side and hayes jr is there for his second pick of the game and that is another mistake here by a coastal quarterback but two turnovers i mean in these close games you can't afford to make those turnovers as here is lamb back on the offense there is cedric granger and the rest of the squad to tackle him on that one so now facing a second and 13 after the interception sending a blitz and look who's getting in Cedric Granger once again on back-to-back -back plays. He's going to be the captain going into next season and on a third and 20, running a draw play and Moore can't get anywhere on that one. So now they do have to settle for a long field goal and they do make it, so making it 45 to 28. So now back on offense, here's Curtin. I just want to see some nice throws, some nice easy throws, see some accuracy. Uh, I want to see you know how a young quarterback like him comes back up to their interception. You see there on a fourth and four, converts to Amari Manuel but now under a minute left in this game here's Curtin throwing to the outside nice throw that time to the senior CJ Goodwin it's gonna look a lot different at receiver I mean I don't even know who's gonna be there we do have the freshman true freshman coming up Justin Johnson I don't know if he's gonna get redshirted or not but he comes in as probably our most athletic receiver right now with the height and the speed as now 20 seconds left in this game as Ooh, we got lucky on that one. Amari Manuel getting open past the safety. And Kashawn Curtin puts it right on the money. And that is going to be it as we try to kick this onside kick. 
down by 10 points one last chance and coastal is going to touch it early and appalachian state is going to fall on that one and what a season it's been i mean four and eight on the season we thought we had a chance you know we thought we did have a chance but in the end it just turned out that you know we just didn't have the talent to compete with these good teams and we actually made this a 10 point game and this is a good appalachian state team they're going to get better in the future along with the other teams in our conference so this is a good building block i like what i saw from my seniors this year they balled out i'm proud of all of them but we got a lot of work to do in this offseason and pretty much every position on offense is up for grabs to be honest with you every single position on defense is a little different we have a couple of starters coming back cedric granger for example darius terry's coming back ryan marshall is coming back danny armstead frederick billups those guys are all coming back there are a couple of spots that do need to be filled and we need to fill for depth as well so i mean it's gonna be an open competition pretty much everywhere so i i'm proud of the season that this team had against all odds we at least won four games we kind of set the bar low we thought it was only going to be two games when this season first started so now we're moving on to the second season in this dynasty so hit subscribe hit that like button because the off season is coming up and you don't want to miss any action and remember submit your recruiting info down below because if you want to be a recruit in season two make sure to submit that info because i'm looking for some good recruits remember you guys are going to be all one stars so i want a good backstory so stay tuned let's get it into this offseason let's get it let's go